Hello everyone, I'm Phoenix Tremaine and I'm about to review Candyman 2021 directed by Nia DaCosta and it was produced by Jordan Peele, Nia DaCosta, Jordan Peele and there was one more person, uh, Wynn Rosenfeld did the screenplay together starring Yaya Abdul-Mateen II, Tayana Paris and um, I would like to say that the third star of this film is Coleman Domingo, and then um, uh, Michael Hargrove. So those really are the four central characters that we're we're following around the most. Um, Yaya Abdul Mateen II. Let me tell you before we get started, this is a spoiler review. If you don't want to be spoiled, I'm gonna tell you this right now. I hated it. I didn't like it. It was trash. I'm glad I didn't see it in theaters because if I saw it in theaters, I would be even angrier. It's a bougie, artistic piece of crap thinking that it's a good horror movie. Um, Nia DaCosta may be a good director, but she is not a good horror director because I've seen people with like zero budgets do so much better, less artistic, but got the job done and became horror classics. So, yeah, this was a very pretentious horror film that didn't have anything really happen for the first 30 minutes. So, for those of you who don't want to be spoiled, there you go. Nothing happens for 30 minutes. I was bored. And then, over the next hour, you know, they kill white people. You know, black people get killed except for, like, um, the Candyman, you know, retelling. And I do finger quotes because they're, the Candyman they focus on is not Tony Todd's Candyman. They create a, another Candyman. Uh, Sherman Fields is the Candyman you see throughout the film. So now we're going to go ahead and go into spoilers. So um, Sherman Fields was a guy who... Um, looked like he might have been maybe a little mentally challenged. He liked to give kids candy. He had a hook for a hand. And um, when there was razor blades found in the candy, um, they blamed him for it because he's always giving out candy. And I think they said a little girl died or something. Uh, so they were searching for him and hunting for him. And this is one of the stupidest things in the movie that I had to rewind because it's um, you can rent it now on VOD. Uh, um, Redbox, Amazon Prime, wherever you can get your VOD, it's there. It costs $19.99. I'm glad my friend paid for it, not me, because then I'd be even angrier than I am now that um, I wasted so much time anticipating a film that sucks so bad. Um, so uh, the police was looking for him, but this is what I put in my notes, and I just have a few notes because I didn't want to do a long review uh, on a movie I didn't like. And um, one of it is the kid in the beginning is playing with puppets telling Candyman a story before it actually happens. And that's when I put WTF. Because it's like, I had to rewind. I was like, wait a minute. The kid told the story about what was about to happen before it actually happened. Who is proof checking and writing this stuff? Well, we know who, but, you know... Did you just want to make a quick dollar? Is that what the deal was? This movie is very heavy-handed. There's no nuances. Um, all the white people are horrible. And um, so we just got to do the countdown till we see them um, get killed. Even the girls you see chanting in the mirror. Um, there's a scene where the, the Asian girl is like, not today. And runs out. Clearly that was written for a black character. But anyway... Um, a black girl does enter and what they start doing is they start bullying a black girl because they want to make sure that these weren't just some random white girls in a mirror like they would do for somebody like Bloody Mary and saying that over and over again and then see if something happens and so they do the whole Candyman chant after they bully the black girl who we never see again and then, <laughs> and then Candyman goes and just kills them all however However, we don't really see it. We see little pieces of it because you can only see Candyman looking in the mirror. 
So, you know, there's a compact on the floor and we get to see him so that I guess hook a girl and drag her away, whatever. But one of the worst things about this film is the kills. The kills suck. They do most of it off camera. There's really no close up. You really can't really feel it because it's just really off. And at the end, at the end, I was like, where is this going? And then, I, I'm not going to lie, I had got on my computer. I was on my computer probably no more like 45 seconds uh, looking up something, Twitter, Instagram, something. And um, it was like, I heard a scream. I looked and I was like, oh, rewind that, rewind that. Because I'm like, oh, something about to happen. And then they do a 180. And out the blue, out of left field, out of nowhere, a character who has shown absolutely no signs of villainy becomes a villain. Cuts off, uh, what's the character's name? Um, th the movie's so bad, I don't really care about people's names. Anthony. Cuts off Anthony's hand, sticks a hook in it, talking about he's going to be the new Candyman that will, will pr basically protect black folks or whatever because he's like a supernatural hero in this one even though he killed a bunch of black people in that prior um and he just turns into this villain and the thing is they tried to do a little body horror wasn't very effective but um his hand was already falling apart and coming apart nails coming out you know skin peeling he's already started getting like this hive little thing going um through at his body burns whatever so it was like they didn't even need him to do that or go there. It was already happening. So for him to do that, kidnapped girl, all those kind of... It was like, what movie am I watching? So this was my theory. That they had a different ending to the movie, which probably sucked even worse. And it felt like this ending was just tacked on. And then, you know, you get... Like, if they had nuances... Um, they could have had, like, black and white cops. They could have made a statement about black cops that don't protect black people. They just go with the flow or something like that. But no, it was, like I said, it's heavy-handed. They just, like, white people evil. And this movie is to kill white people so that, you know, black folks that are mad at white people feel good. But it's done horribly. That's number one. And, um... This ending scene where it just comes out the blue. My friend was confused. I was confused. Like, why is he doing this? I know he had a long speech trying to explain it. He wasn't crazy. They didn't really set him up to be crazy. He's been in the film since scene one. But they never... Re the neighborhood's already gentrified. So, <laughs> it's like, what's getting bad going to do? Ungentrified. Um, and then the police at the end are completely horrible and predictable based on what we've seen so far where they threaten um brianna tiana paris's character saying you gotta say that you know he jumped at the police and that's why we shot him and or else we can say you're his accomplice so we want you to be complicit in what we're doing and so she just says candy man five times in the mirror and then candy man comes to start killing cops movie goes off well we get like tony todd for like 30 seconds and i'm like so is anthony the new candy man what does that mean for sherman fields version of candy man and um because he was he was mimicking sherman you see it in all the trailers if you've seen the movie you look at the trailer they show everything in the trailers and um then then there's a transformation where Anthony turns into uh, the original Candyman. And um, and then he talks to the girl and says, tell everyone. And he goes off. And I said, WTF. They screwed this movie up so much for so many people that were really looking forward to it. Um... I really wish, I know he's older now, um, I really wish they had done with more with Tony Todd's version of Candyman and having him pass the torch to Anthony, giving Anthony a better reason to become Candyman. I wish they had better kill scenes, 
I wish that they got the ball rolling a little bit earlier. Um, they were really heavy handed in their message, trying to like, do you get it? Do you get it? Do you see? Do you see what we're trying to say? You get the message? Yes, we get the message. Especially since most of us is going to be black anyway. Um, <laughs> watch it is. Even though there's a lot of Candyman white horror fans, they know who they're marketing this movie to. We get it. We live it. We're here. <laughs> yes, we get the message. Got it. Received. Um, but we already knew it. So if they had focused more on a story that gave that told a better story, they could have had a better movie. They could have got the same message out. They just needed to actually care enough to make a real horror film and not some artistic crap. Thank you for watching. I'm Phoenix Tremaine. Feel free to let me know in the comments. What you think about this movie? I didn't look at any other reviewers until after I saw the movie. Except for a couple of people. I feel like some of the white um, reviewers that praised the movie, I feel like they were too scared to be called, you know, um, called, you know, uh, racist or something uh, to actually say what they really thought about the film. So I'm saying it for you. It sucked. It's okay for a movie that sucks to say that it sucks. You know, as long as your reason is because it actually sucked and not because you're hating on it because of other reasons. So thank you for watching. I'm Phoenix Tremaine. And hopefully you will catch some more of my reviews. Thank you for watching.